in Colombo for a first-hand assessment of the post-war situation in the country. A 12-member all-party Indian parliamentary delegation were in the country headed by Shushma Swaraj, leader of the opposition Lok Sabha, on a six-day visit beginning from the 17th of April 2012. During their visit, they met the president, senior government officials and political party representatives and also travelled to the north to observe the ground situation. At a special press conference convened by the Sri Lanka Freedom Party during the visit of the Indian delegation, leader of the House, Minister Nimal Sripala de Silva, appraised the media on the outcome of the discussions the delegation thus far had with the government. I am a Jutta Pirisa Parliament to the Paminia, Parliament to the Pamila Vadi, Una Hati Makue, Apata Sangwar the Ne Pilibandava. Navata Padinchikiri ma Pilibandava Apita Kisima Prashtiakne. Api Itamatma Satutra Patilati Nova E Anche Pilibandava. Namut Apita Gatalu Ashang Tiene Jatika Sanghindia Vatikiri me me Gaman Magi di Balea Beda Hari ma Pilibandava Genean Labana Kriya Marge own the K Tikaka Heming Yana Kriya Marga Katiat. Sadharna washing Api Deshi Visandumak, Me Sandaha, Laba Dima Sandaha, Api Kramave de Aksakaska Latino, E Kramave de Tamai, Parliament to Terim Karaka Sabahab. Convening a press conference prior to their departure, the leader of the delegation outlined the content of their discussions with the local officials and stated their observations during the visit. We would earnestly suggest urgent consultations to create conditions for launching of the Parliamentary Select Committee. Uh, Sri Lanka has made repeated promises on devolution for the, for the Tamils from uh, in May 2009 and again when uh, Rajpaksha met the Prime Minister in July 2010, yes. again with uh, SM Krishna in uh, uh, 2012 January. Uh, what is the sense that you get uh, out of the meetings with Mr. Rajpaksha and uh, the rest of the Tamils? And do you think the government is serious on devolution at all? We emphasize this point almost in every meeting even today with Mahindra Raj Pakshadi. And as you rightly said, we also reminded them that we have given assurance to the Honorable Prime Minister of India, the Honorable External Affairs Minister of India, and even to me as leader of the opposition when I called on him. But they say that Parliamentary Select Committee will discuss on this. And they say that we are very, very serious. We told them that you are not only talking of 13th Amendment, but you are saying 13th Amendment plus. We spoke to Suresh Premachandran of the Tamil National Alliance to find out his party's views on the visit and the proposed parliamentary select committee. They said the government was very, very serious, but they said they, that the government also stated that this can only be done through a parliamentary select committee. What is your response to this? After she left, there was a news item in the island. Uh, they said, you know, they didn't discuss, uh, uh, the, you know, from the presidential secretary or the media man. Uh, he said, you know, they didn't discuss anything about the 13th Amendment. Okay. That was the answer given by the, an authoritative person from the media section. Okay, so, so right? the, yeah, the discussions you had with uh, the... Uh, the, the, the discussion we are having with Sushmita Sivaraj is somewhat different. But here... The president, earlier, in fact, earlier he told the Indian Prime Minister, I will go beyond the 13th Amendment, and he called it as 13 plus plus. Then after that, he told the Indian Foreign Minister, Krishna, I will go beyond the 13th Amendment. He said the 13 plus, 13th Amendment plus. Even to the Indian delegation, Indian delegation told the press media, uh, President apparently told them that he will go beyond the 13th Amendment, right? That was the uh, messages given by the Indian side, right? From the Prime Minister down to the Parliament delegation. But from the government side, our President uh, down to the ministers and the media person, they, all the time, they said, you know, we didn't discuss anything about the 13th Amendment or the devolution matter with uh, Krishna or for that matter the Indian delegation, whom we can believe. 
Okay, so but in the discussions that TN I had with uh, the Indian delegation, did they say that they were going to bring this up with? Uh, yes, they told us. In fact, we were discussing about the talks which were which uh, which were held uh, from January two thousand eleven up to January 2012 and we were having the discussions on those matters, how it was held and what happened all these meetings and not, we, didn't, we couldn't achieve anything, we couldn't even, even move an inch, that was the situation and we told them government is not serious, the government always want to portray themselves that we are, they are talking with the TNA and they want to send a message to the international community that you know we are engaging with them, we will find a settlement, there is not necessary others to involve in it. So they want to send a message across the world that you know we are very serious in the talks and we are dealing with the TNA. But in practice they are not serious. For last one year we couldn't come to any conclusion, any decisions and we couldn't even, we couldn't even move an inch, that's the situation. So we told these things to the Indian delegation and they told us, yeah, we will take up these matters with the president. Okay. Okay, so uh, according to the delegation, now say that they, since the government wants this to be done within a parliamentary select committee, that they should be able to persuade the TNA. That was the effect that uh, was brought out there. Do you think that the, the stance the TNA has towards the parliamentary select committee would change after this? You, you know, the point is this. You know, we told even Susmada Sivaraj and to other, other members of the delegation and even to the public and the international community several times. In fact, we are not against the Parliament Select Committee, but there was an agreement between the President and our leader, Mr. Sambandan, saying that we will have some agreement on the substantial matters, which we are given, already we are given a proposal. If there is an agreement on those matters, then with that proposal or with that agreement, we will come to Parliament Select Committee. That agreement can be given as a, a common agreement between the TNA and the government or that can be a government proposal, whatever it may be. So in that situation, definitely we will, we said we will participate. But bilaterally, if we couldn't come to any agreement, how could it be possible in a multilateral forum? Because the Parliament Select Committee is going to be a multilateral forum, where definitely there's going to be a single hardliners like Vimal Veeravansa, Sambika Ranavaka, and of course our friends Karuna, Douglas Sayavananda, all these guys will be there. And if we couldn't come to some understanding with the government delegation, how it's possible to come to some understanding with all these people? Okay. You so see? this was brought up with the Indian? Yes, yeah. which, was, which was brought up to the Indian delegation, which we told again and again to the Sri Lankan uh, delegation also, our, our negotiating team, and we told to the public also. Still, actually, we, we, st actually, we strongly feel that can be the uh, way out. So, otherwise, it will be very difficult because actually, uh, if we, without any agreement, if we go to the Parliament Select Committee, that will be an academic exercise. I don't think that will bring any solution to the Tamil problem. Earlier, I was, a, I was one of the member in Mangala Munisinga Select Committee that was appointed to come to some uh, decision to resolve the Tamil problem. And we met more than 100 times and almost three years. And they came out with a report. The report is in the parliament library. No one didn't touch it. Then our president appointed two committees, that is the APRC, All Party Representative Committee, and the Expert Committee. Expert Committee given a majority report, and, and that was appreciated by all the people. And, the, and even <coughs> the APRC also given a report. So those both the committees were appointed by our president, the present president. What happened to those reports? Nobody knows. So after that only he invited us for talks. Before he come to any, uh, any conclusions, they were come to any agreement, immediately he switched on to the Parliament Select Committee without coming to any agreement. So this is the fourth forum in his, in his uh, uh, I mean, period. 
So, Parliament Select, I mean, All Party Representative Committee, Expert Committee, Government TNA Dialogue, now the Parliament Select Committee, right? So, how many forums do we need to discuss these matters? And how many times we are going to discuss these matters? So, this is the reality, you know, this must be understood by everybody. Just one small clarification, sir. You mentioned that your concerns about this Parliamentary Select Committee and why you initially didn't want to uh, uh, didn't want to be a part of it, uh, and this was expressed to the Indian delegation as well. So it's a bit uh, peculiar that they now say that uh, they now ask the government that they could pursue the TNA to be part of this PSC. But uh, that's what I'm saying. You know, we are not hundred percent denying that we will not go. But provided, uh, no, there must be some agreement. That's what I'm, that's what we are saying. There's no need to persuasion. We are prepared to go if there is a proper agreement on substantial matters. Okay. If that can be done, yes, we are prepared to discuss that. Okay. Even now, even yesterday or today, I, I think the UNB secretary said, "Okay, well and good. If we go to Parliament Select Committee, what are we going to discuss? Is any is any paper on the table?" From the government side, no paper, nothing. What are we going to discuss? Is it? This, but following their visit here, has anything changed with them in terms of uh, like resuming the talks or going the process going moving forward? Has the government changed anything within that? I, 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 I couldn't see anything because the you know the our, our president when he told the Indian Prime Minister, I will go beyond the 13th Amendment. He didn't do anything. He told the Indian Foreign Minister, I will go beyond the 13th Amendment. He didn't do anything. Now, after all, now he met the Indian Parliament delegation. Right? So, for them also, he said, I will go beyond the 13th Amendment. Okay. That's it. Nothing is going to happen. Nothing is happening. Okay. Some of the Tamil Nadu MPs, uh, they pulled out of the delegation before it left saying that it wouldn't be purposeful. Do you think the uh, uh, pulling out of the delegation was justified considering the... Because no, no, actually when, when you see the rigid stand of the Sri Lankan government and uh, definitely it shows, you know, the, it may be, the visit may be. Uh, of course, you know, the, the parliament delegation, they came and they went to Mulatevu and they met, the, they went to the Manik, Manik farm and they met the refugees and you know they went to Yafna, they might be got some information. That may be the first hand information. That may be helpful for them. Uh, other than that, I don't think they were in a position to convince our government or our president. I don't know if they could initiate anything. That may be a different matter. Uh, I don't know whether that will take place or not. But other than that, you know, they came and they met us. Sri Lankan president and they conveyed various matters. They said, you know, you have to demilitarize the area, you have to start the dialogue with the TNA, uh, you have to resettle the people, you have to reduce the high security zone. All these things were raised with the president. Mm -hmm.